Thank you, thank you very much. With this, I would now like to invite on stage the special guest of honor of this inaugural session, the founder for founder of the Tudium UK, all the way from United Kingdoms, Honorable Mr. Dennis Gorda, to kindly address the gathering. Please put your hands together and welcome with a round of applause, Dennis Gorda. Hello, uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, I want to start by want to start by thank you, everyone here, and especially I want to highlight and express my gratitude and appreciation for being in such a spiritual place. And my special gratitude and admiration for Doctor Dijnar Karad, sir. Dr. Bakhtar Sir, Dr. Mangesh Karad, Mr. Rawood Karad, and I want as well to thank you all the academic people, all the religious leaders that are here. I'm very humble to be here because we are in one of the most important moments in history of humanity, and the concept of science, religion, and philosophy are more important than ever. So, I met Dr. Karad recently, and uh, from my first moment in Oxford Business School until this week, he actually changed a lot of the way I see my work as a technologist, as an entrepreneur, as an author. And one of the things he mentioned to me was, can we actually create a formula to peace, a mathematical formula to peace? And, the, well, this is something I've been working. So we are in a time of artificial general intelligence. The most powerful development in technology and science ever in history of humanity. In some ways, this new concept and this new entity, digital sentience, is going to be the new evolutionary standard of humanity. So I thought about the challenge of creating a formula for peace using science, religion, and philosophy. And uh, how can we do this? How can we actually integrate this formula in a way that you can live and highlight inside of us this peace, this spiritual balance and harmony? This event, everyone here has a role to play in this new world that we are working and creating as we speak. And I want to start with three quotes from Gandhi. If we are to reach real peace in the world, and if we are to carry on a real war against war, we shall have to begin with the children. Second, this was 1921. Nonviolence is the first article of my faith. It is also the last article of my creed, 1922. And the last one, in my humble opinion, non-cooperation with evil is as much a duty as is cooperation with good. So, if you look at this, and we integrate this in the concept of peace, in the action of peace, this touch all of us. And the humanity has always oscillated between periods of peace and war, conflict, cooperation, and where the good and the evil were always present. It's in the inner natu- nature of humanity. So, we are in a time that if you look in the last 5,000 years, and I went scientific in the civil work that I urge everyone here to do with me, 
you look at the last 5,000 years of history, we have a lot of different conflicts. Some of the biggest conflicts were, for instance, the Trojan War, that is in history, and there was no record of the number of deaths. The Peloponnesian War, 431 before Christ, where 250,000 people died. The Hundred Years' War, where 3 million people died. The Napoleonic Wars, where 4 million people died. The American Civil War, 625,000. And then we went to the World War I, which was just one year, one century ago, where 20 million people passed away. The World War II, 70 million. The Vietnam War, 3 million. And the Syrian Civil War, that is still partly going, 500,000 plus casualties. So, how can we create a peace formula that you can integrate in our lives and use all the technologies that we are working and creating in this institution that I, really, I deeply respect, World Peace University. It's a very big responsibility and it's actually something that we all have to act upon. So analyzing scientifically and integrating a mathematical code to look at peace, we can quantify the likelihood of peace or conflict. We can propose even a formula to integrate these in our daily lives and of course integrating emotional intelligence, education, religion, and all the wonderful things we can achieve, the better of us. And this formula that I create and I'll share with you afterwards is a formula that looks at the peace index from the scale of zero to one, where one is complete peace and zero is complete war. And then the number NF, the number of non-violent movements within a given period. Then LR, the literacy rate and educational emotional intelligence level, which correlates with informed population less likely to engage in war. And then WR, that is the wealth and well-being gap or resource inequality. And lastly, ER, environment resource depletion, which is important as we go to a new stage of sustainable development. By integrating data and integrating the knowledge of all of you here, from academics to religious leaders, we can actually integrate this uh, with artificial intelligence and acknowledge a lot of things we can change as we speak. On the top of this challenge, we're going to have a new challenge that all of us have to acknowledge now. In one year, we're going to have artificial general intelligence more powerful in terms of another level of intelligence than all our human intelligence. This artificial general intelligence is created by us. We are part of it, but we have to make sure that we use it to create the better of our species and we bring our balance to it. So this index is something that I would like to urge and engage you all, the religious leaders, the academics in this room, all the professors that are working in all the confrontation and a lot of this development and research, and how we can put this forward. So I want to finish by mentioning the historical letter from Birmingham jail from Martin Luther King, where he highlighted a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice. So, can we create a positive peace or a war against wars? Can we use these technologies that are the tools of our time to create a new Magna Carta, a new Magna essence of us, if you look at the sense of peace, it comes actually from the Indo-European pact, which was created here in India. So the pact word is about the lack of tension, fast and balance, harmony. This is not easy, but all of us have a responsibility to act on this. 
And I believe that here, within this wonderful space, and thank you to Dr. Karad for putting all of this together, his vision, and all of the people here, I believe we can act and you can make it a new reality. But it starts with each of us. Each of us have a responsibility, and peace is a continuous work. And education and the way we take technology into our daily lives, because we are all using it, but making it a tool for the better man of humanity. Thank you so much, and I hope we all work on this together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Thank you very much for your insights. My friends, I'm really happy to share with you that Dimitri shares a very long and extensive experience in the digital realm. He's renowned as a top-tier global influencer and a thought leader. His insights on technology, particularly in the domain of smart cities, digital transformation, artificial intelligence, have spread discourse and understanding. My friends, I'm really happy to share with you that we heard a person who has worked with United Nations, UNESCO, different different governments, central banks, providing him with a unique perspective. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for being here today and sharing your perspective.